Your self-reflection is non-existent. Your answer to the fundamental questions of life is, lol, the Bible was written by God. Christians who engage in your level of religious analysis have a, have a toddler's level of, of self-awareness. Somebody emailed me a video. Conservative reacts to Bo Burnham's inside. This is a guy on the Daily Wire network. There's no way this isn't funny. And if it's not, well, watching my stream and my videos are free, so I don't really feel guilty. One of the things uh, people say to me a lot, one of the complaints I get about this show is that I talk about God so much. Stop harping on God. Why do you have to talk about- Oh, by the way, fun fact. This is actually the guy who did the voice acting work for Omni-Man in Invincible. About God all the time. You know, I can be a good person and I can be a good conservative without God. Nothing's so great. I, I totally get it. And yes, you can be a good person, a wonderful person, and there are many awful people who believe in God, many good people. <laughs> So, sorry, he just reminds me a little bit of J.K. Simmons. Doesn't he look a little bit? Like, a little bit. A little bit? A little bit? Maybe I'm just racist against white people. White, bald guys. People who don't believe in God, uh, many good conservatives who don't believe in God, and many people who are not very good conservatives who do. My only point about this is your philosophy doesn't make sense. If you're a good person <laughs> who, who doesn't believe in God, your philosophy doesn't make sense. And the problem with having a philosophy that doesn't make sense... Wait! wait. Wait, if you're a good person and you don't believe in God, your philosophy doesn't make sense. Wait, what's their philosophy? Does not believing in God mean that you're morally compelled to do wrong? What does that mean? Sense is that under pressure, it collapses. And that's some of the stuff we're seeing in our, our culture today is oh. people who can't defend their positions because they don't know why they hold them. One of the things about God Reminder, by the way, that in spite of conservatives and Christians who say this, there is absolutely no evidence. Zero that Christians are more moral people. Literally none. Nil. And there are plenty of metrics by which you can make the opposite argument. Like racism, for example, positively correlates with Christian fundamentalism. You know? Like, there, there are quite a few things, quite a few behavioral types that lean in that direction that this guy probably thinks racism is based in red-pilled. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe he does. God is that there is no objective good, moral good, without God. And, the, you know, and we, we do believe, no matter how we talk ourselves out of it when we're in philosophy class in school or on CNN, we believe in an objective good. And you have to look at it from the negative. I take issue with this, by the way. Point of view, you have to think, can it ever be good to torture a child for your own personal enjoyment? Is what? there any series of systems, a uh, series of circumstances where to torture a child for your own personal enjoyment uh, can be a, a good thing and not an evil thing? If every single human being on Earth, except presumably the child, thought it was a good thing, still the child would be in the right and every single other person would be in the wrong. What the fuck is he? When, when conservatives go off like this, the only thing I'm hearing them say is that if they didn't believe in God, if they didn't believe that they would go to hell for it, they'd be raping children. That's the only thing that I hear when they say this. When they're like, dude, how can you be moral without God? For me, it's only the threat of eternal damnation that keeps me from doing evil shit. Like, like, what, like why are you self-reporting, okay? The whole world manages to get on with its day without believing in God. Well, the whole world of atheists, I guess, so. Morality is not actually relative. It's simply that we what does this have to do with inside? completely. We approach it by half measures. And in order for there to be something good, it has to be closer to an ultimate. Vosh, don't mischaracterize the argument. That is literally the argument. He's literally making the argument that it is only the divine judgment of God which assigns people a, a, a perspective with regards to objective morality or of any moral position. That is literally the argument that he is making. The divine uh, judgment argument, or the, the what is it, the uh, divine command theory, that the only reason he has a moral compass is because a big guy in the sky is telling him to, you know? Ultimate good, right? There has to be a direction leading to good and a direction leading away from good, and that ultimate good just can't be a thing. It's not a big statue saying, I am the good. It has to be a consciousness, because good is a conscious choice. It has to be a living consciousness that can choose, that is free to choose, because good is always something free, is, uh, uh, is always a free, the free conscious choice. A tornado may destroy a million things, but it's not evil. So what? good is always a conscious choice. And that's why I think if you believe that something, that there is such a thing as objective good, you believe in God, whether you know it or not. And okay. He has a sussy old video called, Why Do Blacks Vote Co for Conservatives? Wait, it actually says that? Why do blacks, not black people? Okay. I just want to see. Oh, this hello. This is Andrew Clavin on the culture. 
There are many mysteries that trouble the human mind. Oh man, this is quite the sussy start to this topic, isn't it? Oh God. How did the universe come into being? Why is there evil? What the hell are women always complaining about? But of all these conundrums, the most baffling <laughs> enigma is surely this. Why do black people vote for Democrats? Today oh, okay, wait, he said black people in the video, even if he said blacks in the title. The terrifying answer. The Democrat Party has always been the party of racism. <laughs> Fortunately, in 1850, men of conscience opposed to slavery formed a new party, the Republicans. The Republicans chose as their leader Abraham Lincoln, who had risen to fame after inventing the $5 bill. Lincoln wrote powerful <laughs> speeches denouncing slavery. Wait, how, wait, how much, how satirical is this? Wait, that was good. Wait, right, how much of this am I supposed to take seriously? This is a shit post. Which he posted on the walls of the Greek temple in which he lived, for some reason. Until his No, wait, this is fun. Wait, this would be fun. Is this conservative humor? Is this good conservative humor? Did we, did we find some? ...in the Civil War brought the unholy institution to an end. After the war, Democrats throughout the South passed so-called Jim Crow kind of funny, laws, though. which effectively stripped... It's Biden. This is Biden back in college. ...blacks of the freedoms won for them by their Republican allies. And yet, bizarrely, in 1912, many African Americans deserted the Republicans to help elect Democrat President Woodrow Wilson, a virulent racist who allowed the Jim Crow laws to spread to the federal government. Hey, did... did, did did Woodrow Wilson have a significant black voting base? What is that? How, how would I even find that out? How, votes for Woodrow Wilson by race. Would they have even... How would I even find that out? <laughs> okay, here we go. Here's some info on the 1912 election. Oh, wait. For the first time, many African-American leaders and newspapers turned against the Republican Party and looked for other alternatives. Wait, how many black people voted for Woodrow Wilson, though? It doesn't, it doesn't say the, the race of the... But could they vote? They could legally vote. The 1912 U.S. presidential election. Okay, hold on. General election. Attempted assassination. Uh, electoral results. Can we, get, can we get by race, maybe? Is that... Okay, I don't care. What are we doing? By the middle of the 20th century, Democrat segregationists like George Wallace... Orville Phobos and Bull Connor were defending the Jim Crow laws against the growing civil rights movement. As I don't know what we're doing. Just get focus. And if knowing it gives you more power because you can make the arguments you have to make when the pressure is on. Without God, you know... Oh, I actually didn't know this. Woodrow Wilson's most active and prominent supporter from the black community during the 1912 was scholar and activist W.E.B. Dubois, who campaigned enthusiastically on Wilson's behalf. Dubois endorsed Wilson as a liberal Southerner who would deal fairly with black people and whose economic plans would benefit all Americans. Damn. <laughs> yeah, you, your boy Dubois misread that one a little bit. It's Du Bois, not Dubois. Is it? Doesn't it go either way? Du Bois? Du Bois. Du Bois. Ya boy, Du Bois. Messed that one up a little bit. Man is in relationship with nothing but himself. There's nothing to choose. He has nothing to choose. His desires are sovereign. He's just a piece of clay. You know, so it's whatever the clay wants, that's, that's the object of the exercise. And that's kind of the underlying assumption of the left. Leftism is a materialist philosophy. We believe that we are in relationship with something. And the reason our culture is, is stagnant Why are we right talking now, about terribly, God? Terribly stagnant because we've already done all the bad guy stories we can tell. We've told the Sopranos. We've told uh, Breaking Bad. We've gotten all the bad what? guys that we can possibly do and that's kind of interesting in the world but we can't we no longer know what the good is because we've stagnated culturally because we don't know what good is because we keep telling stories about bad guys what because we no longer know who god is <sighs> and the thing about having no belief <laughs> after you've watched five seasons of breaking bad you are just completely cut off from from the holy the holy spirit okay in God is that you only can tell one story. You can only tell the story of how absurd everything is. And that story can be told well. Waiting for Godot is a wonderful play about that story, but it's still the same sing story every single time. The diversity of storytelling comes from individuals, unique individuals striving toward this 
good that they see in themselves, but they either can't reach or can start to reach. And that's what makes stories stories. And that's why the is this guy is this is this guy on crack? What the fuck are we talking about right now? All stories that aren't about a guy trying to become good are the same story, and all stories of trying to become good are God. Wh what? This is this is so incoherent that it is legitimately impossible to debunk. He's not even wrong. There's nothing to even say. This is actual crazy. And I don't know what else to say about it. I think what he's trying to say, didn't you recently learn not to assume drugs but health conditions? Oh, you're right. Okay, he's not on crack. He's cripplingly mentally ill. Sorry. Is that better? Okay, there. Um, I, I think the, the only, the only like meaning that I can interpret from what he's saying is that the only story man can tell in the absence of God is a story which comments on the absurdity of life. And the only story that a man can tell when he believes in God is him try is a guy trying to get closer to God, but failing. And that those are the only two stories. Okay. There's a million stories, a million endless stories to tell because there are a million kinds of people, endless, infinite numbers of people. But if all those people are just pieces of clay, the only story you can tell about them is how absurd there is. So I was. I think what he's saying is that um, Breaking Bad is a bad story. So that's something. Watching the show Bo Burnham's Inside on Netflix, uh, and it's very popular. And Bo Burnham is a very, very talented uh, comedy writer and satirist. Uh, really talented and the show is very entertaining uh he was Aww. a comedian burn was a comedian who hey this guy's seen inside before me <laughs> i still haven't seen it uh whatever he shows here will be like the most i've seen of inside this is me getting it piecemeal has so much anxiety so many anxiety attacks he couldn't perform anymore so he stopped performing went away for five years and at the end of five years he thought you know i think i'm saner than i was i think i'm i've kind of come around to being uh stronger mentally than i was i'll go back into performing and then the pandemic hit and he was forced to stay in his room for a year and so he wrote over the course of a year alone inside this room he did he did this really quite uh creative performance of his songs and his comedy Aww. called inside because I, I just want to say, but wait, doesn't it kind of, doesn't it kind of take apart this guy's message a little bit that he's saying this is like a good piece of art when Bo Burnham, it's not about God. Like, isn't Bo Burnham very explicitly about the absurdism of the universe, at least to some extent, but now he's saying that this story is good, even though this is definitely not some aspirational story of a man trying to get closer to God. Yeah. Bo Burnham seems very much to me an atheist. He's spending the year inside, and he's really talented, and it's an impressive and entertaining show, uh, especially the, the satirical parts of it. And I'm going to criticize the show. Uh, he's very woke, and he's very left-wing in his politics, but so what? So that's his, his politics. He, you can make a good show with that. Uh, but still, wait, there but is he doesn't believe in God. The whole previous four minutes of this thing... Were you saying that storytelling is predicated on man's relationship to God, and now you're going to tell me you like this piece of media? Okay, well, I don't know. maybe this is maybe he thinks there are two stories you can make if you don't believe in God: the absurdism of the universe, but then also Bo Burnham's inside about the show that is that one story that we hear over and over again. Now, the satire is excellent. He has a song which is the masterpiece of the show called Welcome to the Internet. The whole show is, of course, he's living online because he's stuck inside. And here is his depiction of the Internet. Now, that's a oh. great line. Can I interest you in everything all of the time? Because everything all of the time is nothing. And without God, without a moral framework, and you cannot have a moral framework without God. I know you think, some of you think you can, but you can't. Believe me. <laughs> without a moral framework, there's no distinction. There's no distinction between a quirky Power Rangers quiz and, and instructions on how to make a bomb. Without, without God, you actually cannot tell the difference between which Power Ranger are you and how to construct a pipe bomb. They are actually indistinguishable. It's a physiological thing. Your brain can't, it's like you, you, if you don't believe in God, those two documents are to you what faces are to face blind people. You just mix them up, you know? 
it's all about what what he what, take your choice. Take your choice. It's uh, you're interested in everything all of the time. It it really is good. That's really good satire and really funny. And his music is not the most original. It's a little bit repetitive, but still, uh, the writing is good. It's strong, and I just found it interesting. He did another song. The other really good song is called. Wait, the is that the only commentary he has on that? The only thing he has to say it was funny. And by the way, if you don't believe in God, there's no difference between BuzzFeed quizzes and bomb making instructions. That that was that was like his. That was what he had to say about that. You know. The white woman's Instagram, where he describes all the beautiful things that are on a white woman's Instagram page. Oh, Here's a I've, little bit I've of seen that. this. Hyena showed me this. <laughs> that's, that's really good stuff. Very observant, you know, and again. But the thing about satire, and I do satire on the show. Oh, I no. open the show with satire. Is, is I just wait, I just need to guess, okay? If you're a white woman who doesn't believe in God, there really is no difference between any of these things. <laughs> It's essentially negative. In satire, you are making fun of a system that isn't working or a person who's doing something stupid. It's like critical theory, right? It's like critical theory. You can always criticize, but underneath that criticism, there is an a positive assumption that you have something better to offer. And if you don't start to offer that system, that's something better, uh, then really your satire is kind of uh, complaining. It's complaining. If, you're, if you have nothing better to offer, you're- Wait, hold on. Wait, hold on. I actually do agree with this. I think that if you're satirizing something, your satire should sort of imply the existence of a, of a, of a preferable alternative. So where is he going to go with this? Is he saying that Bo Burnham has failed to offer an alternative to white women on Instagram? Because I've got one, okay? Latinx NBs on TikTok. Yeah. Yeah, that's the next thing. Satire is just complaining. It's just catching. And I said Latinx, ironically. And uh, the problem with the show, with the show inside, is once this, that the satire is excellent. Every time he describes the internet, it's just terrific. But once he starts to get into his own self-reflection, it becomes the same old, same old thing. So he does one thing where he talks about the fact that he is he does a a song, and then he comments on the song, and then he comments on himself commenting on the song, and it just becomes this uh, infinite regress, a house of mirrors. Here's a little bit of that. Huh? It's, it's pretty unlikable that I that I feel this need, this desperate need, to be seen as uh, intelligent. And the, the video's ending here. Hey, everybody. See, it's and to cut right on. Look, I'm very confused. See, I'm very, very confused because I'm staring at myself. I don't know what I'm looking at. What? And I'm starting to catch up. Now I'm realizing what's going on, that, right. and uh, I think he's making fun of me. Uh, yeah, now I'm now, deciding to react right. okay, so I'll to the, the reaction. reaction. Without God, you're in a dialogue with yourself all the time. Constantly That's not... Okay, there are several basic failures of analysis taking place here, okay? First of all, what you're watching is a criticism of, or at the very least, satire on modern commentary culture, which you do and are doing in the video that I'm reacting to by doing it myself. So this isn't like some toothless complaint. This is a pointed commentary on your job, in part. This has nothing to do with God. Constantly in a dialogue with yourself, constantly in that infinite regress, uh, hall of mirrors. And you know, one of the things about this show that really moved me is he reminded me, he's about 30, he reminded me of myself at that age when I was it, suicidal. It. Uh, and, uh, and I think that uh, I, I worry about the kid, I actually do. Uh, he's, you can't be in a dialogue without God, you can't be in a dialogue. Kind of a, kind of a backhanded bit of sympathy here with anything but yourself you can't ever know what reality is you can't ever say oh yes i will now stop everything is analysis everything is breaking things down and like criticism like critical theory if this is the thing that i had with charlie too it seems like a lot of conservatives have like a moral a moral aversion to the concept of criticism like they want everyone remember when charlie kirk said that school should be for making people grateful that was fucking weird that's like a very odd thing to believe, you know, but it, we're, we're kind of we're kind of seeing it here, too. It's it's a very strong moral inflexibility, basically like you're unwilling to acknowledge nuance. 
you don't want there to be discourse. You just want some kind of absolute totalitarian right and wrong that everyone agrees with and stays in lockstep all the time. It's a very authoritarian way of thinking. Um, and it's not surprising to me that this guy would, like, adhere to it as well. Criticism is a good thing, you know? Everything can always be broken down into smaller and smaller parts. You know, intelligent people, intellectual people, have the same reaction to their intellects that a lot of have, guys have to their penis. Basically, it is a source of self-esteem and pleasure to them, so they begin to think it's a lot more important than it is, okay? Your intellect is a wonderful thing, and hopefully your penis is a wonderful thing. Did this guy just want to talk about dicks? Did this, this, this guy just want to talk a little bit about peepees? Yeah, he did. You can see this about anything. Guys who like boats are like, are like guys who like penises. They like them a lot, and they think too much of them. Guys who like cooking stromboli, they think a stromboli a little bit like a penis. They like it too much. They think too much of it. What? But, but it is not the center of the universe. There is a wholeness to be had when you let... Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Hey, speaking of God and the inherent moral purity of people who believe in it and preach his divine word, Kent Hovind, the guy who I almost debated but didn't, uh, one of the, one of the, 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 the founding architects of the push for creationism in schools, has been arrested in a domestic assault case. He was arrested before for tax fraud, and now he's been arrested in a domestic assault case. An arrest warrant alleges that he intentionally threw his estranged wife to the ground, causing bodily harm. Damn. Analysis go. When you stop analyzing things, and when you start to experience them as a whole human being, because you are in contact with the image of yourself, which is on the big screen, which is God, the creation of yourself and the purpose uh, that you are, you were created for. You know, th this, this idea that when you have nothing, when you're not in dialogue with anything, that other people start to define you. Not only are you in this infinite regress, that you are defined by what other people think of you. And he, man, I'm not, e I'm not even like that versed on the, the theory behind Gnosticism. This is, really bad Christian theory. Are there any Christian people in chat right now? Can you attest to the fact that this is a very illogical and inarticulate defense of, of Christian principles? You know? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Or any ex-Christians? Maybe. Yeah, yeah, Vermin. It's like, it's, yeah. It's pretty incoherent. He makes this point, Bo Berman makes this point inside that he's living for the laughter of others, for the, for the reactions that he because gets. Because he doesn't have from God. Others, because they kind of define him. They give him life. And he has no, you know, he worries, oh, am I making the world a better place with my comedy? But it doesn't really matter because, as he says, I want all eyes on me. So he's constantly criticizing himself, but he has nothing else to offer. You know, there was a story in the New York Times, just, uh, New York Times is a former newspaper, uh, and there was a story in it about people who don't. Wait, former news? I'm pretty sure the New York Times still exists. Want the pandemic to end because they don't want to go out again. Uh, and there was one guy in it who was a um, he's a black gay guy, and Based? he is married to a white gay. Oh, he meant like form like formerly a newspaper. Like now, now it's like propaganda or something. I don't know. Gay guy, and he doesn't want to go out again. And here he explains why. My husband is white, and we often uh, have conversations with folks that we meet on the street, and I become invisible. <sighs> I go into a market, and I'm either ignored, totally, or followed and watched. That's a microaggression. <laughs> it's a grown man. It's a grown man worrying about a microaggression. Hold on, really quickly. What the fuck does this have to do with anything we were talking about? Well, I'm sorry, just before I talk about the actual content of this, what, what does this have to do with anything? What, this is completely random. Is he, has he forgotten? Is this like a case of senility? He was in the middle of talking about inside and then he, he he just saw like a a funny prompt on his computer and had to bring it up. Where, where 
Yeah, was there like a quota on like making fun of black people that needed to be met because Bo Burnham's white and he? I, I, I just I, I'm really confused about the structure of this particular video. Now, with that being said, I find it ironic that this guy is complaining about the black guy complaining about the concept of microaggressions when white Christian men are legitimately the most fragile human beings on earth. There is no group of people, none in existence, more dedicated, more committed to bitching about everything. He's Jewish, just to clarify. Oh, is that true? Wait, is that true? So by God, this whole time, huh? So what would it be then? Kvetching? Ha! You know, <laughs> it's like, it's like there are people. No, in he was raised Jewish and converted. What's this guy's name? Andrew Clavin. He just, I, I knew a lot of Jewish people. I've never heard any of them talk about religion the way that he does. Hold on. He was born to a secular Jewish family, converted to Christianity. Yeah. Yeah, who said that? He was born to a secular Jewish family. We converted to Christianity. That's the reason why he said that he used to be suicidal back when he was 30, because it was before he converted. Christians love to talk about how bad their life was before they converted. They love that shit. They love it so much. In this world. Seriously, there are people in this world hoping that they don't get macheted uh, by a raving uh, racist mob tomorrow. Uh, and he's worried be that when he goes to this supermarket, people talk. Who is, who is worried about getting macheted by a racist? What are you talking about? Wh what? And also, what, what is this? You complained about this thing, but another group of people complained about another thing? What? What is the, what segment are we on? What tangent? To his, uh, his husband, uh, you know, because, because he has nothing with which to define himself but what? other people. And Burnham has this stuff too. And it's interesting that, it's interesting to me that, for instance, Bo Burnham never questions. He never questions whether he should be locked inside, whether he should maybe go out and defy the lockdown orders. He never questions what? global warming. He never questions uh, systemic racism. He never questions anything. What the fuck is he talking about? Accept his own purpose for being, because that's the thing he can't understand. So all of his self-reflection, while all of his satire is excellent, his music is excellent, his self-reflection is adolescent and, uh, and second-rate. His self... Your self-reflection is non-existent. Your answer to the fundamental questions of life is, lol, the Bible was written by God. Christians who engage in your level of religious analysis have a, have a toddler's level of, of self-awareness. All the questions that other normal, healthy humans might have about their life, to you have been answered by the toddler's red-painted wooden blocks that you cram into whatever shaped hole you have in your brain. He has one thing about suicide, and he's written a song about suicide. Why don't you just kill yourself, basically? Uh, and when he says he starts the second half of the show... Fun fact, that was actually specifically written in reference to this guy. By saying, don't kill yourself, and this is what he says. And if you're out there and you're struggling with, you know, suicidal thoughts and, and you want to kill yourself, I just want to tell you, don't. Okay? Can you not, please? Just don't, all right? Quit it with the... But really, don't kill yourself. You don't want to because... There are people that love you. That's not true, necessarily, but there could be people that love you in the future. And just don't. I've had people close to me kill themselves and- Get ready for, by the way, get ready for the commentators. 10,000 IQ response. Uh, how about don't kill yourself because it's a sin? Dumbass. Don't kill yourself because you'll go to hell. <laughs> Man, these, these, these atheists, they don't got anything figured out. And I'll be honest with you, You're ready. didn't love it. Didn't love that. So just don't. He can't even come up with a reason to live, and he's broadcast. He's showing his picture of himself on a picture on a T-shirt worn by himself, looking incredibly uh, bored and depressed by this.
That's the point. Wait, is is this guy legit? Like, is this ableism? That's literally the point. This is the directly the. I, I haven't even seen this show, and he's literally he's listening to himself say this, and he's clearly not convinced by himself saying it. And the point is that the reason that you have to not kill yourself has to be more substantive than the thin, insubstantial advice you often get from people who are well-meaning but utterly incapable of... Th that's the point! Monologue. You know, it, it obviously reminds you of Hamlet asking himself to be or not to be, and Hamlet's only reason... No! ...to live is because he fears that something after death uh, might be worse. No, that's your point! That's you! That's why Christians don't kill themselves, except they do, as much as anyone else. That's why Christians say they won't kill themselves, because it's a sin. That's it. That's your point. And what he's in, and that's why he doesn't kill himself. But the whole point about Hamlet, the whole point about Hamlet, no, well, is he's one character in this panoply of characters that Shakespeare has created, each one of them in a different relationship with the moral universe, Hamlet in the Bo Burnham relationship. That, as Shakespeare knew, without God, that's the only story. Hamlet is the only story you can tell, and you have to tell it over and over and over again. And that was my problem. What? Literally, what the fuck is this? Literally, what? What? What is the... I Genuinely, I can't... I actually don't have, how do you criticize this? You know, I feel, I feel like in order, I need to make sense of what he's saying to respond to it, but I'm not capable of it. How was what Bo Burnham said like Hamlet? Hamlet wanted to die. And the only reason he didn't was because he was afraid of the afterlife. Because Hamlet was a Christian and Christians knew it was a sin to kill themselves. What does that have to do? That's, that's your perspective, dude. Problem with Inside. I enjoyed it. I think it's worth watching. I recommend it. The guy is tr tremendously talented, and his satire is really, really. I need to know what the comments are. I'm sorry. This is like he thinks referencing Hamlet makes him sound smart. Yeah, probably. This is really bad. Oh. Okay. It looks like the comments are mostly calling him out in it. Probably because, yeah, probably because he made the mistake of putting Inside in his title, which got people interested in Bo Burnham to find this video, and they came in and they watched it, and they were not impressed. I, the thing that really befuddles me the most is his random tangent on that gay black guy. Like, it had nothing to do with anything. Do, do all of his videos have, like, the 10-minute break where they talk about, like, a black guy with a microaggression? I just have to wonder because it was so weird. These are fairly low view counts. I, so does, he does the full show? Oh, we've seen this intro, haven't we? Hold the on. American Biden summit. Wait, which, like, I want to see the intro. Chinese. The intro. I feel hunky dunky and like a duck. Oh, that's so winging, also singing, hunky dunky doo. Ship shaped, dipsy topsy, the world is a bitty zing. It's a wonderful day. Hooray! hooray. It makes me want to sing. Oh, hurrah, hooray. Oh, hooray, hurrah. All right, we are back. Did God make that? Do you think it's a little bit jarring that you have this deeply religious guy, but his intro looks like it's out of a 2001 South Park episode? You know what I mean? Like, isn't that a little odd? It just feels like there's a little bit of a tonal dissonance from this guy who thinks he's some kind of philosopher theist. But, like, he's being preceded by this. I don't know. Wow, dude, the Muslim is a knife, GJ safe price. Yeah, you think this guy isn't Islamophobic? Yeah, it does look like a Newgrounds meme. It looks like a Newgrounds meme that was made in, like, two days by a 14-year-old. Yeah. That is the only video intro that you can produce if you believe in God. That is the limit right there. That is the only thing that you can produce if you believe in God. I'm sorry if there are any religious aspiring artists who are watching this and they're dismayed by that information, but it is true, and I'm sorry.